Hi, welcome to the Business of Apps Icons on Google Play tutorial. A slightly shorter tutorial than normal, this is going to introduce you to icons on Google Play and it's going to give you practical and easy to understand advice about how to improve your icons on the store. My name is George Osborne, I've worked as Head of Editorial Content for MagicSoft.com for two years and I helped launch over a dozen apps on a global stage for both Android and iOS. And I currently work as a freelancer, working as events editor for Pocket Game of Biz, working with content marketing teams at a number of companies, and running my own mobile focus blog at mobilemavericks.eu. So when we're talking about Google Play icons, the good news and the thing that's going to make you feel very happy about hearing all of this is that it's actually pretty similar to doing it on iOS or on the Windows Store. As with those other stores, the app icon is just this small icon that represents what your app is about. And you can see it, as you can see here, in conjunction with other things such as screenshots and the app description. Now, when you're thinking about the context in which people are going to be seeing your app, there's a couple of ways on the Google Play Store that they'll be seeing it. You know, they're going to see it on the app listing page along with other things such as a, a trailer and screenshots. They're going to see it within the app search things and within the app charts and of course they'll see it on the home screen once it's been installed. Now there's a couple of things to bear in mind. Number one, where whenever the icon is seen you can always see some text with it. So at any point when you're designing an icon, even though of course you've got to try and communicate a lot about an app in literally less than maybe a fingernail's worth of basically um, sort of marketing space, you've got that app name to go with it. So you can communicate certain values and then use the app name as a reinforcement. And also what's worth bearing in mind on Google Play is that actually you can slightly change the app icon to fit into the live backgrounds that they have. So for example, if you look at these SwiftKey icons, the actual icon that ends up being installed on the device is slightly different from what they show on the page. So if you want to, and you want to try and make your life a little bit easier, you can actually slightly redesign and slightly shift the icon to make sure that people really do get a really good looking icon on their home screen. But what are the tips to designing a good icon? The main and major tip is that you need to try and infuse it with a sense of character. Because you've only got this tiny little space to be working with, you need to recognise that character and characters, of course, are great ways of creating recognition for your app. Because when you combine it with broader branding, storytelling, the things that people encounter in the game itself, characters can instantly sell your app's strength. And so people will be able to look at it on the store or look at it when they're looking at the device and go, I understand that. I mean, basically, it acts as this sort of mental shortcut. It circumvents all of this thing that they have to think about. You know, do they have to think about what the screenshots look like? Do they have to think about what the app looks like itself? Do they have to read it? No, they can look at the icon and make quick judgments based on their own sort of emotional preconditions. And so it creates this mental shortcut. And if you do it properly, you can do one of two things. You can do what happens at the top, which is on this right hand side where you've got two game icons. So you can either use it as a way of creating this really interesting character who then draws the players back into the game. So on the left, you've got Ridiculous Fishing's gun toting fisherman Billy, who basically provides the linchpin to that game. And on the right, you've got Murder, Murder Files. Um, one of their senior detectives who plays, takes a role in this quirky British puzzle game, basically helping people to create this kind of attachment to what's going on within the app and to make you feel that you want to go back and complete the game. And then on the other hand, you've got Microsoft and the Duolingo owl below. So these two basically help you form sort of different corporate identities and make you really sort of feel attached to apps in different ways. So on the left hand side, you've got the recognizable Microsoft Office branding that makes you feel familiar and safe and secure while you're using the app. And on the right hand side, you've got the picture of the encouraging owl who helps you through Duolingo's language learning facilities. And ultimately, that's kind of it. This is is really what the crux of developing a good icon is about. It's about making sure that when people look at your app they can really recognize what it is simply from that little thumbnail. And so what is the other best practice for designing icons? Well the major piece of best practice is follow the main design trends. So on the left and the right we've got the design for the YouTube iOS app post and pre iOS 7. Now I know it's going to seem a bit strange to be talking about iOS 7 in this video but iOS 7 really introduced this flat design and really threw skeuomorphism out of the window and as a result of that these design habits don't just stay on iOS they actually get ported out to places like Google Play and to the other stores. So it's interesting to see the way that YouTube discarded their old skeuomorphic television style app icon in favour of that interesting and engaging flat design. And it's something you should bear in mind while you're designing your app. Below that, we've got two different apps, which basically illustrate the reasons why you should avoid text on the icon. Now, if you look on the right-hand side, there's Transport Tycoon. On the left-hand side, there's Metropolis, which is a city-building game. And Transport Tycoon, it's a good and interesting icon, but the decision to put that massive 
icon in the middle with text, you know, that transport token messaging ignores the fact that actually the text below the app, the short app name, explains what the game is already. So what they've really done there is that they've taken up some space which could have, say, been used to maybe bring forward those vehicles or to maybe make sort of the plane and the helicopter look larger and more interesting. Whereas on the other hand, Metropolis, because it's decided that they're not going to have text on the app, they've managed to build this really interesting tower that literally stands out from the page. So you want to avoid text simply because it clutters up where you don't really need it. And it kind of ties into the big important final point which is just generally about making sure that you keep it simple, understandable and clear of clutter. On the left hand side, on this particular instance, you can see the National Rail Inquiries app, which uses the sign of the National Railways as the sort of hook for its app. And it makes it very clear what the app is about, and you know very obviously when you're a British app user what you're going to get from using it. Whereas on the other hand, you've got Name Maker Breaking Bad Edition. Okay, so it explains what the app does. But if you just look at that icon, it looks unprofessional, it looks cluttered, it's full of text, it's messy, and people ultimately in the long run don't want messy app icons clustering up their home screen. And so when it comes to designing a really good app for Google Play, just make sure that you remember those following things. One, there's always text with it. So you've always got that ability to stretch your design a bit further and maybe use the text as a way of contextualizing what people are looking at. You should be thinking about how you can bring in characters or the character with your brand into your app. And you should be making sure that you're on design trend, you're avoiding that text, and you're keeping things simple and free of clutter when going for the app icon. And in particular, you should be maybe focusing just on one particular element to try and advertise. And that's it for this video. If you like what we're doing, make sure that you leave a comment below this video to let us know what you think of, it, think of it. If you want to, you know, make sure that other people get in touch with it, make sure you like it or add it to one of your playlists. And if you want to, you can always subscribe to the Business of Apps YouTube channel to make sure that you get hold of the latest videos. That's it for now, and uh, we'll see you later.